Welcome back to another episode of Out Loud Geek, where we discuss news and views about pop culture, science fiction, fantasy, food, cooking, the outdoors, and more. Several new movies opened in theaters for the weekend that ended on May 19th, 2024, but only two managed to get into this weekend's top five movies at the domestic box office. And the total box office earnings were an overall improvement again as compared with the past few weeks. Four weeks ago, the combined domestic box office earned by that weekend's top five movies was only $44.7 million, which was less than the $45 million domestic opening weekend box office that Ghostbusters Frozen Empire earned when it opened eight weeks ago. Three weeks ago, it was worse at only $42.2 million. Then, two weekends ago, the total was better at $55.2 million, but last weekend's Top 5 Movies domestic box office total was very good at $80.9 million, thanks to the premiere of Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. And this weekend, the Top 5 Movies domestic box office total surpassed last week's by $3.5 million for a total of $84.4 million. And that was due to the openings of the movies If and The Strangers Chapter 1, along with Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes staying in the Top 5. But before proceeding, I'd like to ask everyone to please like this video, please share the video on social media, please subscribe to support this channel, and please press the bell to receive notifications. Thanks! I'll begin this weekend's box office recap by saying that there has been a small update for the box office earnings of the sci-fi movie Dune Part 2, which remains the highest grossing movie to date for 2024, both domestically and worldwide. Over the past week or two, Doom Part 2 earned another $800,000 domestically to bring its current domestic box office total up to $282.1 million. Over that same period, the movie has earned another $1.6 million internationally to bring its current international box office total up to $428.5 million. So globally, the movie has earned another $2.4 million to bring its current global gross box office total up to $710.6 million, which is much closer to my final projections for the movie. And I can't say whether it has earned anything else this weekend because not everything has yet been reported as of the time that I am recording this video, but Dune Part 2 remains the only movie so far this year to break $700 million at the global box office. So this weekend's Top 5 Domestic Box Office Recap will include four additional movies that are below the top five since I am continuing to track them. Opening in the number one spot in this weekend's Domestic Box Office was Paramount Pictures' animated-slash-live-action fantasy-action comedy entitled If, starring Ryan Reynolds, Kaylee Fleming, and John Krasinski. The movie earned $35 million domestically and $20 million internationally for a global gross opening weekend tally of $55 million, in spite of a tomato meter score of only 49% on Rotten Tomatoes, but an audience score of 87%. And while that box office may sound great, the movie has a reported production budget of $110 million, which, when multiplied by 2.5 and 3.0 to account for the 50% of gross box office ticket sales that movie theaters keep for themselves, as well as the additional costs of marketing the movie and other miscellaneous costs that the studio pays above and beyond the production budget, yields an estimated break-even point range of $275 million to $330 million. We'll find out shortly what this movie's chances are of breaking even. Dropping to the number two spot in this weekend's domestic box office was Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, which has a reported production budget of $165 million. Originally a 20th Century Fox franchise, this movie's list of production companies now includes Disney Studios Australia, thanks to Disney's acquisition of 20th Century Fox in 2019. Domestically, the movie earned another $26 million to bring its current domestic box office total up to $101.2 million, which means that domestically, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes has earned more domestically than the $100.3 million that Madam Web earned globally during its theatrical run. So I was mistaken last week that Madam Web hadn't even broken $100 million globally. It apparently did by around $300,000 and remains this year's biggest flop to date. Internationally, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes earned another $63.8 million to bring its international box office total up to $136.3 million. 
So globally, the movie earned another $106.6 million to bring its current global gross box office total up to $237.5 million. With its $165 million production budget, when multiplied by 2.5 and 3.0, we get an estimated break-even point range of $412.5 million to $495 million. So we'll come back later in the video to see whether this movie's chances of breaking even have changed. Opening in the number 3 position in this weekend's domestic box office was another low-budget horror movie entitled The Strangers Chapter 1, which has a Tomato Meter score of only 14% on Rotten Tomatoes and an audience score of 40%. But in spite of those very poor ratings, the movie earned $12 million domestically, but no international box office has yet been reported. Dropping to number 4 in this weekend's domestic box office was Universal Pictures' movie The Fall Guy, which has a reported expensive production budget of $125 million. The movie earned another $8.5 million domestically to bring its current domestic box office total up to $63 million. Internationally, the movie earned another $10.5 million to bring its current international box office total up to $64.6 million. So globally, the movie earned another $23.8 million to bring its current global gross box office total up to $127.6 million. But with its $125 million production budget, when multiplied by 2.5, we get an estimated mid-range break-even point of $312.5 million. We'll find out later in the video whether this movie can potentially break even or not. Dropping to the number 5 position in this weekend's domestic box office was the MGM and Amazon Studios movie Challengers, which has a reported moderately high production budget of $55 million. The movie earned another $2.9 million domestically to bring its current domestic box office total up to $43.5 million. Internationally, the movie earned another $4.6 million to bring its current international box office total up to $35.2 million. So globally, the movie earned another $10 million to bring its current global gross box office total up to $78.7 million. And with that $55 million production budget, when multiplied by 2.5, we get an estimated mid-range break-even point of $137.5 million. I'll have a few words to say shortly as to whether challengers can potentially break even. Dropping to the number 8 spot in this weekend's domestic box office was Godzilla x Kong The New Empire, which earned another $1.7 million domestically to bring its current domestic box office total up to $194.4 million, which maintains the movie as the second highest grossing movie domestically so far this year, behind Dune Part 2. In comparison with the other Godzilla franchise movies produced by Legendary Pictures and Warner Brothers, Godzilla x Kong The New Empire is currently the second highest grossing movie domestically for the franchise. Internationally, the movie earned another $2.5 million to bring its current international box office total up to $369.3 million. So globally, the movie earned another $5 million to bring its current global gross box office total up to $563.7 million, keeping it as the second highest grossing movie worldwide behind Dune Part 2. And within the Godzilla and Kong movies being produced by Legendary Pictures and Warner Brothers, Godzilla x Kong The New Empire is now the highest grossing movie for the franchise without taking inflation into account. And because this movie is in its final days or weeks for its theatrical release, I'm not going to continue projecting what its final domestic and global gross box office might be, since its earnings aren't going to be that large going forward. But with its reported production budget of $135 million, when we multiply it by 2.5 and 3.0 respectively, we get an estimated break-even point ranging from $337.5 million to $405 million. Thus, Godzilla x Kong The New Empire has definitely made bank. Dropping to 11th place in this weekend's domestic box office is Alex Garland's dystopian action movie Civil War, with its moderately high production budget of $50 million. Domestically, the movie earned another $1 million to bring its current domestic box office total up to $67.3 million. Internationally, the movie earned another $6.4 million to bring its current international box office total up to $44.3 million. So globally, the movie earned another $8.5 million to bring its current global gross box office total up to $111.6 million. 
Dropping to 13th place domestically this weekend was Kung Fu Panda 4, which earned another $950,000 to bring its current domestic box office total up to $192.7 million, keeping it as the third highest grossing movie domestically so far this year, behind Dune Part 2 and Godzilla x Kong The New Empire. Internationally, the movie earned another $4.5 million to bring its current international box office total up to $342.6 million. So globally, the movie earned another $6 million to bring its current global gross box office total up to $535.2 million, keeping it as the third highest grossing movie worldwide for 2024 to date, behind Dune Part 2 and Godzilla x Kong The New Empire. Dropping to 14th place domestically this weekend was Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, which earned another $435,000 to bring its current domestic box office total up to $112.1 million. Internationally, no earnings were reported this week, so the current international box office total remains at $87 million. So globally, the movie earned another $766,000 to bring its current global gross box office total up to $199.1 million. Last weekend, I thought Ghostbusters Frozen Empire might break the $200 million mark this weekend, but with no reported international box office this week, it fell slightly short of achieving that. So depending upon how much longer its theatrical run continues will definitely impact when and if the movie breaks $200 million. But since this movie is quickly approaching the end of its theatrical run and its weekly earnings are shrinking fast, I won't be continuing to project what the movie's final domestic and global gross box office earnings might be. So with its reported production budget of $100 million, when multiplied by 2.5 and 3.0 respectively, we get an estimated break-even point ranging from $250 million to $300 million. Thus, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire is still a flop, with current losses in the range of $50.9 million to $100.9 million in global gross box office revenue, which, when divided by two to account for the 50% of gross box office ticket sales that movie theaters keep for themselves, means that the production companies behind it, which include Sony and Columbia Pictures, currently stand to lose anywhere from $25.4 million to $50.4 million. Now going back to the movie that's entitled If, using a range of possible average weekly drops from 30 to 40 percent, I can project that the final domestic box office earnings for the movie may range from $87.5 million at the low end, $100 million at the mid-range, and $116.5 million at the upper end. And using the movie's current domestic share of 63.64%, I can project that the movie's final global gross box office may range from $137.5 million at the low end, $157.1 million at the mid-range, and $183 million at the upper end. And that entire range falls very much short of the movie's estimated break-even point range of $275 million to $330 million. Thus, the movie currently appears to be a box office flop and may lose somewhere on the order of $92 million to $192.5 million in global gross box office revenue, which, when divided by two to account for the 50% of gross box office ticket sales that movie theaters keep for themselves, means that Paramount Pictures currently stands to lose somewhere on the order of $46 million to $96.3 million, which is similar to the losses that Madam Web has. Going back to Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, this is the fourth movie in the franchise's current form that has an average weekly drop of 34.71% and a standard deviation of 3.65% to create a range of possible average weekly drops from 31.06% to 38.36%. And using that range, I can project that the final domestic box office earnings for Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes may range from $170 million at the low end, $181.7 million at the mid-range, and $196.1 million at the upper end, which remains on par with what the previous movies in the franchise have earned domestically without taking inflation into account, but is an overall higher projection than last week's. The movie's domestic share dropped slightly to 42.62%, but that's still more than two standard deviations above the franchise's current average domestic share of 32.29%, with a standard deviation of 4.55%. But using that domestic share, I can project that the movie's final global gross box office revenue may range from $399 million at the low end, $426.4 million at the mid-range, and $460.1 million at the upper end, which means that there is now a much higher chance that Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes might break even, provided it can continue to maintain enough box office earnings going forward. 
Naturally, we'll have to wait and see, but based on the current projections and the movie's estimated break-even point range of $412.5 million to $495 million, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes currently stands to lose anywhere from $0 to $96 million in global gross box office revenue, which, when divided by two to account for the 50% of gross box office ticket sales that movie theaters keep for themselves, means that Disney and 20th Century Fox stand to potentially lose somewhere on the order of $0 to $48 million. Going back to The Fall Guy, using a possible range of average weekly drops from 30 to 40 percent, I can project that its final domestic box office revenue may range from $82.9 million at the low end, $87.6 million at the mid-range, and $93.8 million at the upper end, which is a more narrow projected range than last week's. But with its current domestic share of 49.38%, which is higher than last week's, I can project that the movie's final global gross box office revenue may range from $167.9 million at the low end, $177.5 million at the mid-range, and $190.1 million at the upper end, which is a more narrow and lower overall range than last week's projections. So with its estimated mid-range break-even point of $312.5 million, as I calculated earlier in the video, the movie is a flop and stands to lose somewhere on the order of $122.4 million to $144.6 million in global gross box office revenue, which, when divided by two to account for the 50% of gross box office ticket sales that movie theaters keep for themselves, means that Universal Pictures stands to lose around $61.2 million to $72.3 million. Going back to Challengers, using a possible range of average weekly draws from 30 to 40 percent, I can project that its final domestic box office revenue may range from $52.1 million at the low end, $54.2 million at the mid-range, and $56.2 million at the upper end, which is more narrow than last week's projected range with no appreciable increase or decrease overall. With its current domestic share of 55.28%, which is nearly the same as last week's, I can project that its final global gross box office revenue may range from $94.3 million at the low end, $98 million at the mid-range, and $102.8 million at the upper end, which is a more narrow range than last week's projection with no appreciable increase or decrease. So with its estimated mid-range break-even point of $137.5 million, which is obtained by multiplying the movie's $55 million production budget by 2.5, the movie is a flop and stands to lose somewhere on the order of $34.7 million to $43.2 million in global gross box office revenue, which, when divided by two to account for the 50% of gross box office ticket sales that movie theaters keep for themselves, means that its studios stand to lose around $17.4 million to $21.6 million. Going back to Kung Fu Panda 4, using the franchise's average weekly drop of 28.52%, I can project that the final domestic box office earnings for the movie may be around $196.4 million, which is nearly the same as last week's projected mid-range value, and keeps it as the second-highest grossing movie domestically for the Kung Fu Panda movie franchise. But the movie's domestic share did slightly drop again to 36%, so I can project that the movie's final global gross box office will probably be around $545.6 million, which is similar to last week's projected mid-range value. Given that Kung Fu Panda 4 has a production budget of only $85 million, when multiplied by 2.5, we get an estimated mid-range break-even point of only $212.5 million. Going back to Civil War, which is the last movie that I'll be talking about in this video, with a $50 million production budget, when multiplied by 2.5 and 3.0 respectively, we get an estimated break-even point ranging from $125 million to $150 million. Using a range of possible average weekly draws from 30 to 40 percent, I can project that the movie's final domestic box office may range from $70.2 million at the low end, $70.9 million at the mid-range, and $71.8 million at the upper end, which is a more narrow range than last week's projection. Using the movie's current domestic share of 60.3 percent, which is lower than last week's, I can project that the movie's final global gross box office revenue may range from $116.5 million at the low end, $117.6 million at the mid-range, and $119.1 million at the upper end, which is slightly higher than last week's projected range, but remains below what this movie needs in order to break even. Thus, it remains likely that Civil War is going to flop, but not by a lot. 
Thus, the newly released movie If joins Ghostbusters Frozen Empire and The Fall Guy as definite flops, while Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes may have a reprieve from flopping, but Civil War and Challengers remain likely box office flops. But Dune Part 2, Godzilla x Kong The New Empire, and Kung Fu Panda 4 are all profitable box office successes. Thanks for watching today, and a huge thanks to everyone who has subscribed to our channel. We appreciate your support. If you enjoyed this video, please press the like button, and please feel free to share a comment. If you'd like to help support this channel, please press the red subscribe button, and please press the bell to receive notifications for new content. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, Threads, and Twitter by clicking on the links in the description. Until next time, this is Out Loud Geek.